like a list and dictionary set is also iterable so what do you mean by iterable so look here i can iterate the values right so i can iterate the values in a dictionary also right and even in the case of list we are able to iterate the values so what do you mean by iterate the values i'll just type it one more year for example l1 is equal to square bracket list comprehension i'm going to define the list comprehension again here so here uh, i into 2 for i in l and then l1 so i want to create a new list based on the existing list but i want to uh, you know create a new list based on the existing list but i want to multiply each and every value in my existing by 2 for this i've used it so 3 into 2 is 6 and 2 into um, 2 is 4 and 3 into 3 sorry 3 into 2 is 6 and 4 into 2 is 8 one second so here what happens is okay forget about uh, this one the multiplying that and all For example, if I just want to print each and every value, 3 to 3 to 3. If I want, so what happens in this case? It will, when I use for loop, right, for each element, i is kind of element, okay, e, it goes and fetch each element one after another. It fetches the values one after another. First, it takes 3 for i in L. So, first element in L is 3 and second element is 2 so the i is kind of a print here okay and 3 4 5 so since we are able to iterate iterate means select or face the values one after another right that is what called as iteration okay so the list is in that because of which since we are able to iterate the values which we stored it in list we call it iterable list is an iterable you can See first, first in the for loop, what happens is we use for loop to uh, you know value to retrieve the values one after another. Okay, each and every values in your list, if you want to, to retrieve it, what happens is we are using something like for loop to perform some repeatable action. We use for loop. So for loop, what it does is here for the what happens is it goes the uh, in the first in the list right in the specified list. The for what it it, it does is it takes the first element. And then it prints it, and then it goes to the second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element, sixth element. Since using for loop, we are able to iterate. Iterate is, you know, repeat the values. First you select three, and then repeat the same action, but fetching the second element. And again repeat by selecting the or fetching the third element. So iteration. Since you are able to iterate the values in your list list is called as iterable even in the case of dictionary we have seen we can iterate the values in a dictionary and uh, right so this is called iterable so set is also iterable like um, dictionary and list set is also an iterable and it is mutable and it should not contain any duplicate i just put the what is set set is an unordered collection data type it is iterable like a list and dictionary and the next one is mutable you can you can change the values once you store it and you know it should contain only unique values and how do i define a set define a set using curly braces like dictionary even set also you need to define it with curly braces or we can use set function itself there is set is a it returns look here so this is the one for example i am going to create a set by the name of s1 and the parenth the curly braces inside the curly braces i am going to say um raja and uh, Mahesh
and type of yes one set it is a set data type or data structure we are, we are supposed to say structure data structure when it comes to set list dictionary tuple all these things falls in a data structure okay the s1 is a set data structure now we will take a look at the values of the set s1 simply type s1 and hit run you can see the values so see here automatically it, it started it right so b comes first m comes next and r comes at the end okay and now if you want to access the specific value it is not possible set is not subscriptable which means you cannot use index set do not support index here okay okay uh, and also so you can you cannot have duplicate values in your so for example here i am going to say again bob see uh, uh, gilbert has a question even for set we are using curly braces how the python kernel will know. see we know very well right uh, in the case of dictionary you are supposed to specify the key value pair key value pair though we use curly braces for both dictionary as well as a set in the case of dictionary you have to specify the key value pair here there is you, know, you don't have to specify the key value pair that is the difference right you know with this you will be able to understand okay uh, python kernel will understand uh you know which one is dictionary and which one is set okay now since you asked this question i'm going to create something else you know i'm create a new variable called s2 and i'm going to initialize this with curly braces see yesterday i have uh, in the last session we discussed how do i create an empty list how to create an empty list l2 specify the list name on the left side of your equation it can be l2 or anything on the right side simply specify you know the square bracket you know blank square bracket okay so now we will check the print type of s2 now you tell me what data type s2 is all about so what value it will return sorry here type of l2 l2 is a list and s2 is a dict but default okay so th that's a good question in one way right um yeah so if you specify this one the uh, curly braces yeah, empty curly braces or if we initialize a variable with uh, the empty curly braces right so this is called your dictionary by default it is a dict okay and i'm going to say in that case how do i define a set you need to use set function so type of s3 set since the curly braces is used to define both dictionary as well as set and if you initialize a variable with a curly brace by default it will be considered as a empty dictionary okay that is the difference you should be knowing it okay how should i initialize a set i want to create a blank set into explicit set function okay and then uh, the next thing is how can i uh, is it possible to add value to my existing set so you have add functions that is available add um, here something like um, 
we will try with some numeric value yes we are able to add different data types also text and uh, uh, you know integer data type and if i wanted to remove some values because set is a mutable object remove um, for example 20 if i want to remove it after removing it what values are there in my set look here you can remove the value and if you want to find out the length of the this one you can find out len of uh, t already we defined tuple and yet you can see the total number of uh, elements that are there as part of your tuple or list or set you can use len function len function is available for all these data structures okay and the pop is also available for example s1 dot pop function if i give simply if i give what happens is it will pop out it will pop the random value so bob and raja is there but randomly it removes some values okay the mahesh it removed so with this we are able to understand using remove function or pop we can remove the values but the pop function randomly removes it is not going exactly from right to left or left to right okay uh, you know randomly it deletes some values using pop function and uh, we have something called clear function is s1 dot clear like in list here also the same thing is available yes s1 is a empty set now yeah so uh, mukilan asked this question mukilan's question is the same operation we can do it with the index list but why we need set but in set we cannot use index right that is the one difference in list we can use index using indexing you can fetch any value and list comprehension is available and apart from this in the uh, in the case sorry okay in the case of list if you want to uh, remove uh, any value any duplicate value in your list right you can still write some program to remove uh, you can write some for loop and identify some values and remove that but if you want to um, remove the duplicate it's pretty simple with set see here i have l1 l1 right uh, yeah so no, uh, l1 the list l1 has two duplicate values if i specify set of l1 it gives it removes the duplicate values because set cannot hold the duplicate values the other difference is uh, say index operation is not possible and uh, you know the the uh, and uh, with uh, set whereas with the list index operation is possible okay so that is the difference here and um, what other thing we can see it here now uh, we can see the set comprehension also okay and okay so here my set has s1 okay so yeah. okay so you might be asking this question okay so uh, what kind of scenario can i use list what kind of scenario we can use set so it is up to you okay and if you want to use uh, you know uh, if you want to have some duplicate values okay in your list for example price price or any particular kind of when to use sets yes i'm answering that question ba ba mukilan so right so so what kind of scenario can i use a list when should i use list when should i use set if you want to specify, you know have some duplicate values in your list you can go for so duplicate values in your data set you can go for list for example price the same value same price you can you know so you can um, set same price for more than one product right so in that case obviously you need to have duplicate values you, you cannot use set in that kind of situation okay and also you uh, with indexing you can do a lot of things right since uh, you cannot do indexing it is quite challenging here 
right? So in the case of um, uh, set, if you want to retrieve a specific value, it, it is a bit challengeable here. Okay, so in that kind of situation, you can go for uh, this kind of thing. And, uh, uh, you know, the set, set, using set, if you want to remove some duplicate, you, I don't want to have the duplicates, then you can go for set. And also we have set comprehension. Set comprehension is available here. And supposing I have something like uh, yes, yes, uh, set three is equivalent to something like uh, one comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six comma seven comma eight. And uh, here I want to create a set, set comprehension. So you need to use curly braces because using curly braces only you can convert a list. See here I have used a list. How to convert a list into set? So you need to use curly braces. You need to pass list as an argument to your curly braces. right? Uh, so in that case what will happen for example yes for um, i in the set 3 if i uh, percentage 2 is equivalent to double equal 0. So I want to store only the even values okay into my uh, into my set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 okay and uh, now sorry set comp set comp. 2468 set comprehension is also possible dictionary comprehension is also possible and um, list comprehension is also possible in both dictionary and set comprehension we can use a list but if you surround a list by curly braces it will become a set automatically so that is what we can see it here right So we are done with sets also. These are the, and we explored all these, uh, you know, all the features of set. Okay, so we have uh, something else called um, frozen sets. Frozen sets. I don't know if that is available in this version. Frozen sets in Python are immutable. Okay, for example, if I have something called num is equivalent to set of 1 comma 2 comma 3 and type num set only. Uh, if I say something like a num dot add 5, okay, it is possible, okay. One two three five. We are still able to add. One second. Let me just check how to define frozen set. There is something called frozen set. I don't remember it. I used it long back. Frozen set in Python. Immutable version of Python. Well, okay. So frozen set and see the geeks for geeks is also a very good site where you can find lot of uh, things here you can go and explore all the things see frozen set yeah the syntax is frozen set not uh, set okay here uh, you need to use frozen set But here uh, we are able to, so yeah, here, so let me do one thing, num of 1 comma 2 comma 3 and here I just say in you.
frozen set so the next one is um, num of add of 5 look here frozen object has no attribute add first of all there is no add function that is available with frozen set you can make the set also as a immutable object but your set supposed to be a frozen set okay and next we will see the union with set function see yeah um, mukilan you asked this question right uh, the when should i use set uh, when should i use list this is the uh, you know important thing so using set you can do union you can compare this set one set with other set and you can find out the common values between the set and you can find out the symmetric difference of two sets so that is the these are the advantages of using sets so for example in my case i have s1 right so s1 okay s1 is equal to something like um, i put um, 2 comma 3 comma 4 and i'm going to create another set set is equal to s2 is equal to 5 comma 6 comma 7 and if i want to use s1 i think pipe will do this s1 s2 look here yeah this pipe symbol is kind of union okay using which you can combine the two sets value this is how you can perform union union operation you can combine both the sets values okay but uh, now the question is can i use s1 plus s2 it is not possible we cannot compare two list values yes you can compare two list values but you need to use uh, for loop okay you can use a nested uh, for loop right so using which also you can compare the list but it is not straightforward it is not straightforward you need to use a loop for loop and all and and then only you can do it okay so for example if i want to do some kind of comparison okay and s1 is um, less than or equal to s2 something like that okay false you can compare it you know s1 is less than or equal to or if i say s2 is less than or equal to s1 even in this case uh, it is so you know doing this or, or we can do some uh, we can use some text values also here s2 is not less than or equal to s1 s2 is greater than s1 false s2 is greater than or equal to okay because here let me do one thing here let me put 4 and uh, 6 7 okay here you cannot use um, you can use yeah, syntax greater than or equal to supposed to be like this false s2 is um see it depends on the elements that are there in your thing okay so here you can say right for example simply we can say 2 comma 3 comma 4 let's let's assume that way okay so s2 is equivalent to s1 something like that okay true right both of them are directly you can compare it okay supposing you have uh, 5 comma 6 5 comma 6 and with a simple thing you can check it out or the values in both sets are same no you can do it so we have l list l and l1 so can we do the same thing l is equal to l1 is it possible to do that comparison operator unit is double equal because we want to compare the values in both the list shift and enter true you can do it here also list but uh, using set you can do union you can uh, you can do union so here if you do l plus l1 you can combine the you know it is kind of you know the concatenating the values right so l plus l1 and l equal to l1 or if you want to find out the common values okay or the common values we have something called minus for example s2 minus s1 5 comma 6 in set 2 see what is the you know what is s2 minus s1 if i subtract 
the S2 from sorry S1 from S2 what will happen we are left with 5 6 can I do the same thing with the list L minus L1 sorry L minus L1 it is not possible right so that's why set is more uh, you know robust uh, robust in the sense right uh, you can perform all kind of uh, set related operator that's why it's called a set in in uh, Venn diagram right uh, do you, how many of you remember Venn diagram so the A union B A intersection B all those things you can do it here. and also you can do so you can find out the symmetric difference what, what do you mean by symmetric difference there is a method called symmetric method so for that we use something like caret sign so for example yes to yes one symmetric difference if you want to find out the symmetric difference five comma six okay so so what is uh, symmetric uh, difference I just put it in a, something like this here uh, you know so the uncommon value okay so not the intersection not this value excluding the intersection excluding the common value rest of the value in both a and b will get displayed okay excluding the common value so what are the common values? that's what it did right in the case of s2 s1 the common values between these two are two three four it excluded the common value this is the one it excludes the common value the rest of them it displays the 5 comma 6 it displayed for example here I put uh, 7 comma 8 and if I come back here and if I see 5 6 7 8 so this is called symmetric difference okay so we have so far we have seen union and we are able to compare one set with the other set and also we can use minus minus and we can find out the symmetric difference also and if I want to find out the intersection is I want to display only the common value is it possible how do I do that so let's say I'm going to say set 3 is equal to yes to dot uh, intersection we have something called intersection function is available I'm going to say yes one and I'm going to set 3 2 3 4 is that correct yes 2 3 4 is common between these two set since it is with intersection for function okay intersection and this is your symmetric difference And uh, this one is union. I think union is also there is a union function is available. Let us do one thing. Yes, when dot uh, union yes two, and then yes one. Let me see. Yes, union. There is a function by the name of union itself available, like intercept. Even for symmetric difference, that is available. Okay, symmetric difference. Sorry, here yes two dot symmetric difference yes one look here there is symmetric there is a function called symmetric difference itself available the other alternative is you can use the caret sign okay it is difficult to remember the caret and all or if you remember this you can do it okay symmetric difference. And then we have uh, something else called intersection update method. 
okay uh, so in the case of intersection update method it removes the items from the original set that are not present in both sets we will see to that now and um, so here i simply copy paste this one instead of intersection i put intersection update it is not giving me anything okay we will have to have one more set in this case so here i'm going to create um, okay set 3 is already available right uh, let me do one thing set 3 is available okay here i'm going to use set 4 set 4 yeah intersection update you need to specify more than one argument here s1 s2 and set 4 sorry this is set 3 it is not giving any value here because set 3 1 2 2 3 4 2 3 4 is available. okay let me do one thing we will create a separate list this is my set 3 or i'll create something like a is equal to let's you know 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and b is equivalent to 5 comma 8 11 and uh, c is equivalent to 22 24 and um 5 here what i'm going to do is a dot intersection update B comma C. It gives me five. Okay. So it what happens here is it removes the values from the original set, right? In the A. So what happens is find out the common values across all these three sets. and it retains only the common value in your set a it removes the rest of the values that is what your intersect intersection update so don't ask me what kind of situation i can use it so it depends on your requirement you want to compare let's say you are given uh, three different uh, price list uh, in the price list right uh, for the same product different prices okay and the common price right the price which matches for you know all these three seasons listen season 1 season 2 season 3 in quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 each quarter let's assume that for some products uh, irrespective of the quarter the price will remain as it is for some products the price may change you want to find out all the three quarters which products price remains constant so that kind of situation you can use it next we will take a look at the conditional and control flow the if uh, if statement okay so conditional and uh, conditional programming so what is conditional programming what is conditional programming so for example in the real time scenario based on some conditions based on some conditions you want to control your program flow so in that kind of situation we will have to use something like if you want to make some decision based on some conditions based on some uh, you know uh, conditions or criteria you want to take the decision in that kind of situation the uh, the if condition is coming to be coming into picture we are some so to basically to control your control uh, control your programming
flow okay so in that kind of situation we will be using if else statement if else nested if conditions here we will be using it okay the syntax for the if condition for first i'll write uh, this one control programming we want to control the control your program flow you will be using something like called you know if condition and all if condition if the condition is true so what you do is tab leave a tab here see in python it is very much important you need to specify tab you need to press tab okay or what you do is press your space bar four time 1 2 3 4 so after the say so this is my if condition so here in this case after evaluating the condition right so whether it's a true or false right uh, so the next what will happen is the set of statements will get executed so this is a syntax syntax statements to execute if the condition is true so here what we do is statement statement 1 statement 2 something like that okay i just make this a markdown say so for example i am going to say a is equal to 8 if a is uh greater than let's say a is greater than uh, i am going to say 5 If this condition is true what you do is a is equal to a plus 10 and then print a so what we are doing is so what i have done here is i have assigned the value 8 to a variable called a next what i'm going to i'm going to check if the value 8 so a is holding the value 8 right so here you just think you know 8 8 is greater than 5 obviously 8 is greater than 5 then what you do is see uh, the, the, the if followed by you need to specify the condition and then followed by the condition you need to specify colon this is mandatory in other programming languages instead of colon they use curly braces so where the body of your if condition starts so my if uh, the sorry where the statements you need to specify it right so this is my if condition if condition is true so a is greater than 5 it will return true or false in this case since the 8 is greater than 5 the condition becomes true hence the control will come here it will execute the set of statements or the block of code that belongs to your if if block right this is called if block for for the sta the statements that belong to if block will get executed if the condition is true okay and let us see what happens here here yeah this is for other program curly braces since in in the case of python you don't have to use open curly braces closed curly braces instead all you need to is you need to specify only colon but when you the advantage of other programming languages when you specify the curly braces in other programming language the advantage is where it starts where it ends we know that So in that case, you don't have to leave the tab and all here, right? So you can you know type it here itself. Since in Python we don't use the end curly braces or open curly braces, you need to leave the tab for each statement that belong to your if block. This is my if block. Only then this one will get it. So here I have leave I I for this this statement one statement two for these two statement. I left a tab here. Let me execute this one. Yes, eighteen. So eight plus ten is eighteen. Since a is greater than five, it returns true. The boolean value is true, and since true is there, these two statements get executed. So eight plus ten is eighteen. That eighteen gets stored here. I want to use print function to print the value eighteen here. 
supposing if uh, a is less than 5 so what will happen so this condition will return false if the condition is written for if the condition returns false then you need to use else block In the else block you need to say print okay so in this case what you need to do is um, you need to use this one let's say you know i'm going to copy paste this one here So here also I am leaving the currency. So here I say print something like it is not true. First of all, the control will not come here, okay? Because this condition returns false, automatically the control will come to else part. else colon you need to specify colon here also okay and you need to enter. so make sure that this else should be typed in line with if here or if you specify tab here and if you click run here it will throw an error okay make sure that the this else also typed in line with this if if you leave tab here it will cause confusions okay so for if block you need to specify colon <coughs> the else also and the else also are uh, followed by the else you need to specify colon which means the else block related statements uh, you know follow follows for you know the else uh, block uh, code or statements the statements that belongs to else block follows from here that is what it says okay if i click on this okay right here. since a is not less than 5 it returns false hence the control comes to else block these two statements get executed okay so th so this is how the we can control the flow of our program so the else in the case of else if the if condition is false the else block will get executed you need to remember that okay so you can use uh, nested if condition also okay you can use nested if condition and uh, and we have something called elif function sorry elif is available instead of using for example i just um, here what i'm going to do is else uh, here what i'm going to do is else here uh, here i'm going to specify one more condition if Sorry, here, uh, here it is not like that. Let us take some other example. Here, let's say a equal to 8. Okay, and... Um, print um, a plus or let's say you know the condition is true it's true in the else part i'm going to say something like this else if a is okay okay what i'm going to do is print a If a is obviously 8 is not greater than 8, hence the condition will fail. And uh, next, what I do is I'm going to you know the control will come to else part. See, obviously uh, here, right? If the condition is not true, then execute these statements. But I'm just forcing here. I'm putting another if condition. So I'm going to 
execute this one. So what happens here is 18. We are getting 18 here. So here also I'm putting this one. Or let's you know if the control comes here and a is less than 8. Okay. And then what it is, you know, simply to demonstrate that I'm just using this one. Else put this one. Maybe this is not the correct example. But uh, we can still, with this, you should be able to understand. I'll explain it with this. Supposing you want to So a is greater than 8, no, condition is, um, you know, in this case, the condition is uh, false, right? So condition is false. It is not going to execute this statement. Automatically, the control will come to else. And the else also, I'm going to use another if condition, okay? If a is less than 8, obviously, 8 is not less than 8. 8 is not greater than 8. So hence, the control is not coming here. So it goes to the next else part. So we have multiple, so this is called your nested if, okay, nested if else. So here else, in the else part, a is equal to 10, print a 18, we are getting it 18. So what we can do is, you know, you can compare some age something, if age is something greater than, less than 18, they are not eligible for, you know, voting, uh, or if the people, or something like, some other, you know, conditions you can try it out. And um, so these are... Instead of, uh, you know, writing if, else, again, we have something called elif. Right? So, instead of writing else and if separately, we can combine these two things into a single line. So, if, else, elif. Mm. So this L should also be typed in line with that one. So th the L also in this case, right? You need to type it in line with LF. So this is the another way of writing your nested if statement. Okay, if else statement. So instead of writing else and the followed by the else, again writing if, you can combine these two things. L if, L if a is less than 8, execute this one. If this condition fa fails, then the control should go to this else part, this else block. Okay. So in this else block, we have two statements, this one get executed. This is the simplified version, instead of, you know, writing else, if, Again, else if, right, it is not uh, much helpful, okay. So, for example, in the case of insurance, you want to compute the medical insurance. You want to find out for different age group, what is the premium amount. So, if age is uh, less than, uh, so, uh, you know, less than, uh, or greater than 18 and less than 24, you can, you know, write multiple conditions, right. In that kind of situation, alone, you will be having, you will be needing multiple or nested if statement, okay. So this is how you can write your if conditions, okay. And uh, we have something called ternary operator. So we have something called ternary operator. Instead of specifying like this, and write so ternary operator. In this case, what we will do is, for example, I have something called um a comma b instead of defining the way values separately it's so a 10 comma 20 and what i am going to do is i'm going to use the ternary operator okay so print a if a is uh sorry um a is less than b 
mm, is less than b else you need to specify else here else b so here if the condition is true print this value the condition is false then print this value for example if i say a greater than b 20 so here the condition fails the 10 a a's value is 10 whereas b's value is 20 obviously 10 is not greater than 20 hence the condition fails the control comes here it prints this one so this is a much more simplified version than this one okay and also you can specify one more if also here okay one more uh, you know condition also here okay you can specify if uh, if a is equivalent to b you can you know you can specify you can print here print b else print a something like that okay if or okay for example if a is um, Okay, any of this is not required. Let's not complicate this. At this moment, you can understand this one, ternary operator, okay? So, you can specify, so instead of having, a, you know, the uh, separate block for if, right? So, you can specify, but the disadvantage is, if you want to execute multiple statements for the if, if block, then it is not possible, okay? So, here you cannot specify multiple lines of statement. So in that kind of situation, you need to use this one. For example, if the condition is true, look here. So what we did, um, okay, if the condition is uh, true, I want to, or the, f the condition is false, I want to execute these two statements. So in this case, two statements in real-time scenario, right? Uh, there are scenarios you'll be having 15 lines of course, statements, 15 statements will be there. So in that kind of situation, this is not much helpful, okay? So if you are, you know, just testing something, right, very simple one, that kind of situation you can go for ternary operator. So the ternary operator is also called as conditional expressions, you know, um, conditional expressions, okay? If you want to evaluate something based on uh, condition, right, so with this being true or false, in that kind of situation, you can go for ternary operator like this. Okay, it's already 140. So we spent one hour 40 minutes, uh, right? I compensated more than what I promised, right? So I, we cancelled one session, I covered more than what I promised. So what you do is you watch today's video and I will share today's uh, the Python notebook, the day three. And simply you can download it and then drag and drop it in your Jupyter notebook dashboard and then start practice it. And then I would suggest, you know, refer Geeks for Geeks and uh, some other sites or Geek for Geeks for Geeks is good. You can go and practice all those things. Go, uh, you know, beyond whatever I taught you if you are completely new onto programming. Okay. Practice everything. Okay. So it will help you to, um, you know, master the Python or at least so far whatever I covered. If you practice it uh, by going through other websites also, right, it will help you to master it. It will help you to understand the concepts very well. And then next week, uh, we will, uh, most likely the plan is next week, we will try to complete Python. Okay. So we will spend at least two, two hours. We will complete Python. And then followed by the next weekend, we will plan for, we will start with the inference of statistics. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Since you don't have any questions, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, see you next weekend.